pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, how good it is to sing praises to your name on the week of Christmas when we celebrate your first coming, but how we also very passionately anticipate your second coming. Father, this morning we're looking at an incredible account, the Annunciation of Mary. Father, I pray that by the Holy Spirit, we have that same Annunciation. And I pray that our response will be exactly as Mary's. I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, tremendous grace, mercy, and peace are yours from Jesus Christ, fellow redeemed. So let me ask you something, a calling. Have you ever been called to either do something or to go someplace? Have you ever had that happen in your life? Or you've been called to do that? I did, I've had a few. But I had a calling, and, and this particular calling was from my uncle Sam. And uh, I was called into military service uh, in the United States military during a, a very most unpopular war, probably the most unpopular war that this country was able to get itself involved. But we didn't call it a calling back then. Uh, but rather, we called it a draft. You know? And we were drafted. However, I did absolutely nothing as to be called or drafted. Not a thing. I also contributed nothing either. It was totally from the Selective Service Board of the United States government. And uh, a calling is exactly the same. The person who is called does nothing. Absolutely nothing. The Selective Service Board also came to me. I most certainly did not go to the Selective Service Board. <laughs> So in the same sort of way, God comes to us. We don't come to God. God came to Mary by sending of the angel Gabriel to her in order to give to her God's news for her life. God does the exact same thing to us today. In the sending of his Holy Spirit to us for the exact same purpose, to share with us God's news for our lives as well. No difference. Notice that Mary didn't go to Gabriel. And uh, fact, Mary made no contribution or notification to God or Gabriel at all. She did absolutely nothing at all. Mary. It was all completely and totally of God, not Mary. We also do not go to God and the Holy Spirit with any sort of concocted contributions in any way, shape, or form. It is the same with us. We do absolutely nothing. It is totally and completely God who comes to us by way of the Holy Spirit. That's it. God, by way of the Holy Spirit, calls us to faith to bear Jesus Christ. Not as our child, as Mary did, but solely as the Holy One of God and the Savior of all mankind. Brothers and sisters, that is our calling. Gabriel announced to Mary the fact 
that the Lord is with her. That same Lord is with us as well today, December 20th, 2020, right in the middle of COVID. And he's right here sitting next to you at Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona. And he's not social distancing himself. At one time, the Holy Spirit came, did his job, and left. But no longer. God in the Holy Spirit stays with us. Jesus gives to us that assurance for what is known as the Great Commission in St. Matthew chapter 28, where he says that he is with us to the end of the age. The Lord is not just always with us forever, wherever we may be, but this Lord is also all-knowing. He knows everything, and he knows all things, not just some things. There is also nothing, brothers and sisters, that gets beyond his knowing and his allowances. You need not only understand this, but my brothers and sisters, you need to please rest in this. Nothing is getting by God. God directs everything. There is also nothing that anyone is getting away with that God will not hold as accountable. And he doesn't care who, you, who the person is. He will also render appropriate justice at the appropriate time. God considered Mary a favored one. Did you see that in our reading? And it wasn't because Mary was allegedly sinless or without blemishes or any sort of attribute by her or from her or anything of her whatsoever. The favor that God communicates here has nothing to do with Mary in and of herself. But it has everything to do with God. Because the word favor here, as God uses it, connotes approval or affection that is totally related to the idea of grace and not human sanctification. A synonym for that word favor is the word gracious. That same word in definition was also common in the writings of King Solomon, especially in the book of the Proverbs. So it is not an admonition of holiness on the part of Mary in and of herself. Brothers and sisters, Mary is not immaculately conceived in any way, shape, or form, for which she personally gives testimony to that. God also considers us as favored by the exact same method. Totally a result of his grace and mercies. We are approved by God. St. Paul tells the Christian church in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, he says that we have been approved or found favor with God in order to be entrusted with his gospel. St. Paul goes on to tell Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15, where he says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, that is already approved, already found favor with God, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. So we are just as favored as Mary with absolutely no difference whatsoever. None. All of this is a direct result of the calling of God and nothing from Mary or us. So this calling of God upon Mary and us causes trouble. You realize that? <laughs> it does. And it has in the past, it does today, and it will cause trouble tomorrow. And the trouble that this causes 
is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what is this trouble that the calling of God in the lives of people causes? The calling of God in a person's life always reveals the sinfulness of the person's life. And it is always irrespective of the person. Doesn't matter who the person is. It is part of God's plan. For in order to appreciate his gospel, one has to see unequivocally one's sinfulness. You cannot have one without the other. It's called law and gospel. So we see this in Mary as well. For when she was told that she was favored or approved and accepted by God, notice she was greatly troubled at this greeting. Why? Why is Mary greatly troubled at this greeting if she was sinless? Mary is a sinner. No different than you and I. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That there is no one righteous, and for added emphasis, not even one person, including Mary. Mary even gives testimony of this fact in her Magnificat, where she says that her spirit rejoices in God, her Savior. So if Mary was immaculately conceived, as some like to attest, why would she need a savior anyway? What's there to save her from? Mary was a sinner just like you and me who needs the forgiveness of sins given by God through word and sacrament ministry. Both, not one at the expense of the other. So brothers and sisters, we too become troubled in the gospel's calling for we too favor human versus divine intervention. We desire so much to want to take some sort of credit for our salvation instead of giving it all with Jesus. And brothers and sisters, don't kid yourself. Religion is all about doing, and people crave religion. The gospel is all about done a huge difference you can't do anything for your salvation period so give it up it's totally impossible you're wasting your time we also can be fearful of the gospel's calling just like Mary. For notice that Gabriel had to tell Mary not to be afraid. Well, what is there to be afraid of from the gospel? Brothers and sisters, the gospel transforms people. Your life will never, ever be the same again. Ever. Just look at Mary. Her life was totally different from that point on. Just like ours. And that can be frightening. But we have that same message from Gabriel. Do not be afraid. Let me repeat that. Do not be afraid of anything. No matter what it is. For we have found favor with God. Just like Mary. See brothers and sisters even today. Amongst all the things that are going on. Including the gospel. We have the complete and total assurance of God. Right here with us right in the midst of trouble, just like he was with Mary and Joseph and the Holy Family. 
Again, no difference. Now, the gospel is also miraculous. Did you hear that? Let me repeat it. The gospel is also miraculous. Most Christians don't hear that today. They have a real hard time trusting in the miraculous of God. For they stubbornly resist to believe or trust in the sacramental minister. And that's huge. The gospel is never confined to human intellect or action, ever. The gospel is totally supernatural, totally. The gospel brings forth miraculous new life. For nothing, brothers and sisters, is impossible with God in his gospel. Nothing. And we see this being demonstrated by Gabriel telling Mary that she will bear Jesus by being a virgin. That the baby conceived in her is miraculously conceived by the Holy Spirit and not from human contribution. Humanity had absolutely nothing to do with it. The same thing is true with saving faith. It is miraculously conceived by the same Holy Spirit and not from any human contributions in any form to include decisions and acceptance of Christ supposedly being able to be afforded by human beings. Utter nonsense. So what's the proper and godly biblical gospel response? To all of this. The proper response, brothers and sisters, is that of humility and purpose. That is, one is to let go and simply let God have his way with our lives as he directs and not us. Notice, if you will, Mary's response to the message of God through Gabriel. She said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to you. Brothers and sisters, that is to be our response as well. God in Jesus Christ enlists us just like the military draft to carry out his gospel. And we are therefore called his ambassadors. And as a result, we are to live out our lives in accordance with our Lord's word and gospel, not deviating to the left or to the right. And so, brothers and sisters, on this Sunday, immediately before our celebration of our Lord's first coming and the incredible anticipation of his second coming, may all of us identify ourselves simply as a household slave of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so to him be all glory, honor, and praise, we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we would take this annunciation of Mary personally to ourselves and allow you to have your way and will in each one of our lives. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, there is a uh, offering plate at the back for your convenience uh, as the ministries continue to continue. Uh, praise Jesus here at Peace in the Valley of Lutheran Church. So thank you for that. And brothers and sisters, we've got a wonderful opportunity here to be able to pray. And I'm going to be praying over these wonderful prayer requests that are in these pray, prayer boxes. But I want to give you the opportunity to uh, share if you're comfortable in doing. Um, I'm going to share a few. I rejoice in being able to see uh, Chuck Cutler with us this morning. Uh, the blessing it is, brother, to see you here. And it is a, uh, a tremendous inspiration as well to the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you. So I 
invite you to share as you're comfortable in doing. Jim. I'm sorry? Jim. Jim. Amen. Ken and Sandy. Kim. Ken. And Sandy. And Sandy. Danny. Danny. Millie. Millie. And Roger. And Roger. I want to lift up uh, Mary and Alan Edwards this morning. I'm going to lift up all the saints at Peace in the Valley. And they're under some stuff. So, anything else? Fran and Cleo. Fran and Cleo. Okay. Let me pray. Thank you, my dear, very much. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all these wonderful saints, brothers and sisters in Christ, here in person, in community worship, but also those that are chiming in virtually from their homes here in Benson and in Arizona and around the world at this hour. God, your church is looking different today than what it has in the past. And Father, we give you thanks, glory, and praise that you still allow us to gather to worship you through word and sacrament ministry. Father, um, we've got a lot of challenges before us, but you're a big God. And you deal with challenges. And so we thank you for that. Father, this morning we want to lift up uh, praises to our brother Chuck Hutler for physically being here. He's still got issues. He's still got challenges. He's still got discomfort. So we ask that you would continue your work in his life to bring healing and relieving of that discomfort, if that would be your will. We also want to lift up Jim, Ken and Sandy, Danny, Millie, Roger, Mary and Alan Edwards, and uh, Fran and Cleo. God, I want to lift up all the saints at Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church. Ah, some of this is really taxing them because they've never experienced this before. And so they're trying to navigate it as best they can and figure it out. But Father, it's in these times when we need to just put all our trust solely in you. I pray that you would help us to do that. Father, there are tremendous prayer requests that are in this beautiful box. And you are intimately aware of every one of those. I would ask that by that same powerful Holy Spirit that brought you into this world by the Virgin Mary, that you would reach down and minister to these requests in that same divine way. And Father, I pray that you would allow us to have peace, calmness, strength, and encouragement as only you can provide right in the middle of incredible chaos and strife. So Lord, for all of these requests that have been audibilized and those that still remain upon our hearts, those are commended to you, and we ask that you please have your way and will in each and every one. We will be so careful to give you the thanks, the glory, and the praise we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.